Hi there, this is Mr. Alexander, and I want to show you how to conduct the one sample t test and how to uh, build confidence intervals using t values. So, first off, um, I want to test the claim that SPHS students live 10 miles from campus on average at a significance level of 5%. And I've got some raw data here. Uh, these are miles that students live from campus, and let's consider this a random sample. Uh, write the null and alternative hypotheses. Remember the null hypotheses is everything is as it's supposed to be, innocent until proven guilty, which means uh, 10 miles. We'll say they live exactly 10 miles from campus. Now the alternative is what we're trying to prove, that they live uh, some other amount away from campus. So we'll just say, looking at the data here, most of these data points are less than 10. And so when I'm looking at it, I kind of suspect that maybe this is, the alternative should be the mu is less than 10. Uh, so there's two hypotheses you could write here. You could say not equal to 10, or after you look at the data, you might say, hmm, maybe it's less than 10. And we'll just go with that for now. To find the sample means, sample standard deviation, and sample size, we need, can use the calculator. And what we're going to do is we're going to go stat, edit, stat, calc, 1. So I'm going to go to my calculator, stat, edit, and I'm going to type in the data values. 8 .2, 3 .7, 1 .4, 12 .8, 4 .7, 6 .9, 11 .0, 1 .1, 9 .5, 2 .6, 3.8, 0 .8. And I'm going to do stat calc 1. And I've got the sample mean right here. X bar is 5.54. The sample standard deviation is S sub X, 4.07. And then finally the sample size is N, which is 12. Next thing we're supposed to do is find the standard error. And the standard error from your formula chart is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So to find the standard error, I'm going to do s sub x divided by the square root of n, which is 4.07 divided by the square root of 12. And I'm just going to type that in my calculator. 4.07 divided by the square root of 12. And I got 1.175, let's call it. How many degrees of freedom for the test? Now, degrees of freedom is kind of a weird concept. It essentially tells us how precise our test is. Uh, degrees of freedom is different for every test that we conduct. And for the t-test, it's simply n minus 1, which is 11. Um, we'll have more to say about degrees of freedom as we learn about the other tests, but for now, just think of it as a way for us to know how powerful and how precise our test is. Uh, the more degrees of freedom you have, the better, essentially. Now, to calculate the value of t-statistic, which we usually write like this, that's also going to come from your formula chart, which can be found right here. x-bar minus mu divided by the standard r error. Or if you prefer, you could write it like that. So for us, it's 5.54 <clears throat> minus mu from our hypothesis is 10, divided by our standard error, which is 1.175. I'm just going to type that in the calculator. 5.54 minus 10 
divided by 1.175. Now I get negative 3.7957, so let's call that an even 3.80. Now, the question is, we're going to take this number and we're going to ask ourselves, is that number sufficient to reject the null hypothesis? But in order to know that, we have to have a critical value to compare it to. So let me draw a picture here. I'm going to draw it right here. Here's a t-curve. There's zero. Here is negative 3.80. The question is, is this value in the critical region? If it is, then we know that the p-value is less than the significance level of 5%, and we would reject the null hypothesis. If it is not in the critical value, then we know that the p-value is greater than 0.05, and we would fail to reject. So what's the critical value? Well, that comes from this t-table that we have here. So I'm going to go past the z-table and go into the t-table now. And it's much easier to read because it's listed by degrees of freedom. In our case, we had 11 degrees of freedom. So I'm looking at 11 here, and I'm going to pick a significance level. Now, our significance level was 0.05, or 5%. And if you look at the chart I drew, that 5% is going to be on the left. This chart's on the right, which means we're going to get a positive value at 0.05, but the t-curve is symmetric. So we just go ahead and take the one on the other side and make it negative. So I'm looking at 11, and I'm going to 0.05, and I got 1.796. Now I want to change that to negative 1.796. So our critical t value is negative 1.797, root 7, meant 6. Let's put that on the chart. It's right about there. Negative 1.796. What that means is everything to the left is in the critical region, meaning our t statistic is in the critical region. So as a result, we know that the p-value is less than 0.05. And for that reason, we would reject the null hypothesis. Um, so therefore, we can say that the mu is definitely less than 10. That's for the population, which means Stony Point students live less than 10 miles from campus on average. Uh, there's one caveat here. Our sample size was 12. Since we had a small sample size, we have to assume that the population of Stony Point students is normally distributed. That's one of the assumptions of the t-test. Either it's normally distributed, or you've got a, a sample size greater than 30 with no outliers. So we have to assume that in order for this to be true, that the students of Stony Point High School are normally distributed in their distance from uh, campus. Let's talk about a confidence intervals now. On this one, we want to know the average distance SPHS students wish to travel from where they live by constructing a 90% confidence interval. Uh, now, here's some raw data, and since we have raw data, not population, we're going to use a t-value. And again, this is less than 30, so we need to assume that this is a random sample generated from a normally distributed population in order for this to work. But I'm going to do the same thing to get the size, mean, and standard deviation of the sample. I'm going to do stat, edit, stat, calc one. So let me type in these values really quick. I got 752, 
set calc one. The at the size is ten. The mean or average is sixteen forty nine, and the sample standard deviation s sub x is fifteen eighty seven point eight three. The degrees of freedom again is n minus one or nine. So to get the t critical here for 90% confidence interval, we're going to use the chart. Now start at degrees of freedom equals 9. Go to the right. We're trying to do a 90% confidence interval. So what that means, if I'm doing 90% confidence interval, here's 0. Confidence intervals are always two-tailed, which means that the two tails must add up to 10 percent. The 90 percent is the white part, the 10 percent is the shaded part. So that means that these each have to be 0.05. So my degrees of freedom chart, degrees of freedom of 9, going over to 0 0.05, that's 1.833, but it's positive and negative because it's both sides. Positive and negative 1.833. That's our critical value. Calculate the margin of error. Well, that's straight off your formula chart. That's t times the standard error. And our t, we said, is positive and negative 1.833 times the standard error is 1587.83 divided by the square root of 10. So let's just calculate that really quick. 1.8. 3, 3 times 1587.83 divided by the square root of 10. That gives me positive and negative 920.38 miles. So, to get the lower and upper bound, formula chart once again, x bar plus the margin of error. So, our x bar was 1649 plus and minus 920.38. So our interval, 1649 minus 920.38, 728.62. Our upper bound, 1649 plus 920.38, 2569.38 miles. So, Mr. Alexander says that the average distance SPHS students want to travel is 1,000 miles. Based on the confidence interval, is this claim correct? Well, since 1,000 falls within our confidence interval, we go ahead and say, yeah, that seems plausible. Um, so what we'd say technically is that the 90% confidence level The claim that SBHS students want to travel 1,000 miles appears to be correct. What's probably better to say is it appears to be not incorrect. Because we haven't proven that they want to go 1,000 miles. We've only proven the areas where they don't want to go. So we know that it's not less than 728, and we know it's not greater than 2,500. And 1,000 falls in there. So it seems to be a valid claim instead of correct. We should really use the word valid there. Okay, uh, thank you for watching my video on uh, one sample t-test and uh, conducting the... Uh, creating, I should say, T intervals, T confidence intervals. Uh, so we'll see you in class next time. Thank you.